So as you begin to build out your product um, definitions, like when should you actually use AI in your product? Um, at the end of the class, you may actually find that maybe you shouldn't ever use this. Uh, I hope that's not the case. This is a bit of a joke. But um, I do think there's, right now, I'm seeing a lot of people using AI in their products that clearly don't need to be using AI. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that, and we'll talk about some of them. But I think it's a clear uh, moment to talk a little bit about why you might want to do this. And again, might be doing a little bit of cart before the horse in this in this particular lecture because we'll be seeing a lot more of these these use cases as we go on over the next couple weeks. Um, but just here's a couple of things I want to encourage you to think about as we begin to talk about AI and how to build it into your products. Um, right now, I would say I would encourage many many companies to think about using AI tools as like somehow a part of their R and D process. Um, basically, these are not tools that I can say I can say with relative assuredness that you should build them and that they'll be successful. Um, lots of people are trying to build ChatGPT into all of their tools uh, and probably finding mixed success with those things. Um, and I think that's because, you know, right now we're just in this hype cycle where everyone needs to have an AI tool built into their into their experience. Um, but it's not actually realistic to expect those to work great for every customer right now. Some of that's down to the model, some of that's down to technology, and some of it's just straight up down to like poor UX or poor um, user experience for how we guide customers through these things. So here in this video, I'm just going to cover a couple like quick high level topics that I think you should consider as you begin to think about integrating AI into your tools. Um, we'll talk a lot. Of, you'll talk and understand a lot more of them as we go through the class. So the first thing, obviously, we are all designers here in this uh, group, um, and we're very familiar with user centered design. And I really want to emphasize this is still the way to think about building products. Um, you still need to have a user problem you're trying to solve for. So for example, a lot of what we're seeing today is I am not a artist, a writer, a video maker, um, a translator, et cetera, et cetera. I am not this thing, but yet I am being tasked with doing this job. Are there tools out there to help me do this? Now, this is a realistic user problem, right? Like many, like for example, I tend to work a lot with small businesses. Uh, many small business owners have to wear multiple hats and they're not writers, but they're being told they need to write a newsletter. And it's like, well, I'm not a writer. How do I do this? And this is where they might go to ChatGPT and say, hey, um, I need to write a newsletter announcing our new menu for the season. Um, give me five paragraphs of a new menu and uh, why it's great and why it's food people are going to love. And they're going to get back a thing that is probably made up, like full of shit, but at least there'll be a structure that then they can go in and edit to. Um, now, that's not an ideal user experience, not how I would want to like do those tools, but it is what a lot of people are doing today, right? They're going to chat GPT and sort of saying like, please, I'm begging you, I need help with this thing. Give me something to work with. Um, and maybe that works for cus for some people. It probably doesn't work for most people though. So again, Solving that user problem is important, but as we're going to talk about, it's not always a generalizable solution where you can just have like, bang, here's everything you need in one in one fell swoop. So they just mentioned, look for a specific use, not a generalized solution. I think because of how ChatGPT has come out um, in the past year or so, lots of people are assuming that these models can do anything, right? They can do everything and anything. Um, and I actually think that that's the worst use of these tools. Um, so for example, um, writing an email newsletter, great. What kind of email newsletter? Is it for a restaurant? Is it for uh, a robotics company? Is it for um, your latest art show? Um, if you were to put any one of those into ChatGPT, you might get something that reads like a newsletter, but it's probably not specific enough. It's probably not good for you as an individual. Um, now, that's not to say that we need to individualize every one of these tools, but what it does mean is actually like if we narrow down the product a little bit more, we might get a better solution here. So what if instead of starting with like, hey, I'm going to have it write the entire newsletter for you, what if instead we say, hey, we're going to help you write a great headline? Um, now, again, there's probably lots of user data out there on email headlines, right? So I go find a data set of good email headlines, maybe even tagged by industry, um, and then we could help customers write a better headline, right? And I, th I think MailChimp has that today. I think we might even look at an example of that this week. Um, now, that's a much more specific goal. And it's also a little bit easier to solve for, right? Because it's clearly like, write a headline. Well, what makes a good headline? Well, it's the fact that it's kind of short. It's maybe got some interesting words in it. Maybe use some emoji, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is a little bit more narrow. And it's easier for to solve for that. Now, 
The challenge is if you don't want to if you don't want to train your model, you might still be relying on ChatGPT to solve that for you, in which case you're kind of back to these generalized solutions. Um, but in this case, I think it's still important to, as a product designer, think about narrowing your, your scope. Um, I would also add to this as a part of this, like start small. Um, don't try to, like you might even say like, well, I can break a newsletter down into headline, um, you know, content, footer, whatever it is. So like, why don't I just create each model for each one of those? Again, um, I think there's this, challenge or this desire for people to, to turn AI into doing everything all at once. Um, and I just think that that's like poor practice for product design, right? Like we generally don't work that way regardless. We always work in iterations. Um, may we try and solve with a big thing with, with, with the zero to one, um, building that first product, but we're always then going in and fine tuning it from there. Um, and again, if the goal of, of anything with this class is like, don't lose all your product design chops, like still rely on iterating, on finding you know, the smallest product change that you can then test and learn from and iterate on. This kind of ties into this thing I was just discussing, which is that, is there an off-the-shelf model you can experiment or do you need to train your model? So again, that sort of MVP or like, what's the minimum viable thing we can build? Um, maybe there's stuff that there's a model that exists and you can just plug into that. I think that's why we're seeing so many people use like the ChatGPT API, because um, it's easy-ish. You get decent-ish results. Um, but again, I would argue that like, maybe it's better to invest in actually training a model for yourself, right? That is something that then you and your company can own and like sort of control a little bit more. Whereas none of us can train chat GPT. It's just like not a thing. I know they're rolling out like the, the GPTs that allow you to sort of do some additional training on top of stuff. And that's something that we might even look at in this class because I do think it's interesting. Um, but you're not going to make that base chat GPT for model yourself. Uh, it, you need millions and millions of dollars in investment. So some of this is again about like, do you buy or do you build your own? Um, and this is probably something that isn't a designer de de definition, but is something talked about throughout the product team, right? So you, your PM, your engineers, but I would say that the designer can imply what the vision of this product needs to be, right? Like what are we trying to achieve? Can we achieve that or achieve a first version of it? with an off the shelf model like ChatGPT, or do we need to build our own? Um, and in a lot of cases, I actually think in for many things, building your own is actually easier if with the right amount of information or with the right amount of knowledge. There's a lot of tutorials today out there on how to like, you know, customize your own GPT models. Um, if you're doing image stuff, there's a lot of things with LoRa's and um, other tools that allow you to uh, sort of fine tune and customize your models. Um, but again, this probably needs to come from the entire product team as a, as a vision on how to do this. And I would certainly encourage you to start, if you can, with a fine-tuned or with a model that you own. Um, you'll be able to iterate on it, change it based on that black box thing where like, hey, let's try it with more data. Let's try training it for longer. Let's try changing out the model um, structure, that sort of thing. And that might give you uh, more opportunity to, to sort of build what you want. Um, the biggest thing I see happening right now is because AI is the big tech hype of the moment, every company is building out their own AI tool. Um, and, you know, I, again, I, I understand that for many people, this is about um, showing investors that you are trying new things, that you're ahead of the curve um, for startups is really about getting your next round of investment. So I understand why this is happening. Um, but the biggest challenge I see here is that often they're building stuff without a clear user problem. They're saying, well, let's just throw ChatGPT in here and see how they respond. Um, let's see if they want to create new content. And I would argue, like, why shouldn't they just go to ChatGPT then and do that? Why, why are they using your product for that? What's unique about your product that really um, clarifies and makes it clear why this tool needs to exist in your product? Um, and for most companies, they don't have that today. Uh, and I think that'll be the big challenge for the next couple of years is people understand that we're still solving user problems with these tools and we need to be more clear about what that is and what we're doing there.